Welcome to this week's edition of uh, the CEO show, Biotech Consultancy's attempt to take a look at the leaders in our country, their perspective of the COVID-19 pandemic, and how our country could during such a dire situation. I have with me today the absolute pleasure of speaking with Mr. Edgar Villahilda, President's Council. Good evening to you, sir. Yeah, good evening. So tell me, sir, when you first heard about the global pandemic and the fact that Sri Lanka was going to be impacted, what was your initial response personally and professionally? Uh, well, uh, it was quite a shock because uh, before it hit Sri Lanka, there were many other countries that were severely affected by COVID-19. Uh, however, when it hit Sri Lanka, I don't think anybody expected us to recover so soon. But fortunately, we are very much out of the woods. I would say so. Yes. Yes. Life as normal appears to be around us, so uh, very encouraging. Um, very. Tell us, uh, in terms of the coping mechanism, uh, can you share with us some of the thoughts of the leaders in the nation and how you chose to take the approach that you did, What? how did you go about making those decisions? Uh, you mean decisions with regard to my professional work? Or? Well, yes, as a, as a nation, with you in the position that you're in, um, would you be able to share how, how uh, at that first instance, what was yes. the thought process? Well, uh, at the first instance, uh, I, for myself, thought that this might... Uh, the lockdown uh, and uh, this complete, uh, I would say, curfew situation mm -hmm. would continue for at least uh, six to nine months. Really? Yes. So then I started uh, making arrangements for various financial commitments and plan for the future, basically for nine months, imagining that there will be no work and I won't be engaged in any work, and the country will be shut down for nine months. Goodness, it appears that dire, that serious. Yes. <laughs> Goodness, interesting. I mean, you, you did not well, the country, the authorities did an incredible job of keeping people calm to be able I, to maneuver. I fully agree, I fully agree. And uh, in fact, uh, during the initial days of lockdown mm -hmm. and the curfew, uh, we could see a lot of people, especially I live in the Colombo suburbs, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the border of uh, the city of Colombo from Rajagiriya. There were a lot of people who earned their you know, uh, wages by daily uh, yes. work who did not have any food. And there were a lot of people who begged for food and not for money. So it was so difficult uh, to, to face that kind of situation where people around you are suffering without any income. So basically, yes, and uh, in whatever way, I think uh, we helped a lot of people around and in many, many places. I think it was very encouraging too to see the uh, stamina of the average individual, the resilience that they yes. portrayed to um, keep everything together. Everyone was helping everybody, and it was truly a, a wonderful display of Sri Lanka. And Absolutely, I think uh, I think whenever there is a national disaster in Sri Lanka, people have got together, forgetting their religion, the caste, the social status, whatever. And they have got together and helped the needy and the, uh, the poor, or who are affected by that. So we could see even during this uh, COVID pandemic that people came forward to help the others mm. in big ways. How did you find um, the new situation of working from home? and having to facilitate the various aspects of uh, overseeing the country and playing the role that you did, was that difficult? Well, as a lawyer, there is very limited work we could do from home. Sure. 
because it's mostly the court work. And especially I, as a counsel, uh, you know, uh, engage in daily court work. So therefore, except for a occasional consultation during this period mm. for an urgent matter, uh, basically there was no professional work engaged during this period. Right. So you had an extended vacation, so to speak. Extended? An extended holiday. <laughs> of course, yes. It, it, it's an extended holiday. Uh, but uh, one has to, I know some, many people are bored with the extended holiday, but yes, uh, I believe if you make use of it properly, uh, it will, it can, you can make use of it and it will be a very productive period. Yeah, I think a lot of people sort of got into that vein of thinking and uh, made it a very productive uh, few months. Uh, I believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> um, tell me coming out of COVID, I'm sure you were relieved, considering you anticipated it would be six to nine months uh, yes. when the uh, curfew was lifted, and uh, within well two months, really, it was two months uh, later, um, going back to work. Was it difficult to get things rolling? Well, initially, uh, the court system started quite slowly, mm. and the judges were quite liberal in day-to-day uh, -day court work. Right. Uh, and the litigants were not allowed in court, only the lawyers were allowed to attend to very essential matters. Right, right. But I, I, there, I, but I must say that uh, that was in the month of June, but uh, by end of, end of June, we, have, we are almost back to normal. Yes. yes. The court system is almost back to normal. Right. Well, that's I don't, I, uh, with, with, of course, government uh, health guidelines and all that other than that the work continues very well mm. well that's very encouraging to hear yes. indeed <laughs> Tell me, um, looking back over the last two months and most definitely you would have kept a very close eye on everything that was going on in the country uh, compared to how the world dealt with the situation uh, is there anything you you thought about well we could have done this differently would you ever consider that? Or is there anything you'd like to see done differently? You mean the situation, the, the COVID okay. management in the country, is it? Yes, yes. Uh, no, I, in my view, the government handled it in the best way they could. And I have nothing to add to that. And every precaution was taken. And that is why I believe today we... Uh, can conduct our affairs almost in a normal way, except for wearing a mask. And and of course today not keep not we are we are not much conscious about keeping that safe distance. Well, yes, we are, we are only wearing masks. Uh, yeah. That's all. But I, I think uh, we have done wonderfully. Mm. Have to agree with you. Um, tell me now, realistically speaking, it does seem as though life has gone back to normal when you step outside the door. But in terms of the economy, obviously, uh, there is uh, certain improvements and uh, certain measures that need to be taken to bring about the recovery uh, to, to assist people on every level. Um, what sort of timeline, what do you see needing to happen? And what sort of timeline do you think we're looking at? Well, uh, I believe the time limit will depend on, uh, you know, some somebody finding a solution to this issue or finding a, a med finding medicine uh, to to protect people from this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. But otherwise, uh, things might in Sri Lanka things might be normal very soon. Right. Uh, because right. so far we have not found uh, any infected uh, person from the society. Sure. Yeah, they are all from the quarantine centers. Yes. yes. And even uh, the recent, uh, the patients uh, from the prison are also from the quarantine centers who have been released from there. So they are, mm -hmm. oh, uh, today, I must say that even in court where there are a lot of public, and we sure. have a lot of interaction with public. Mm -hmm. Some courthouses are packed. 
but still we conduct our affairs without much of a fear mm -hmm. because we have that assurance that it's not in the society. Mm. Yes. So, there, yeah, so, so therefore, it is quite, uh, I would say, our recovery in Sri Lanka appears to be quite fast. And there are only yeah, very yeah. few countries who have achieved that. But at the same time, I would like to add that we can't be, we can't claim that we have resumed uh, normal business until the world also come to a normal situation. Exactly. Yeah. And we're dependent on tourism, um, exporting and importing of products in and out of the country. It, it, it adds to the stability of this country. So the world has to get to where we are yes. <laughs> in order for normal to be seen again. Most yes. definitely. With the borders uh, opening up on the 15th or 16th of August, if I'm correct, um, are you at all concerned? Do you feel that enough precautionary measures are being taken or have been put in place to ensure well, uh, that, that? Yeah, it's difficult to say because uh, the opening up of airports and borders mm -hmm. will have to depend on the situation, not the local situation, but the situation in other country. Because the people from the other countries are going to come here. Mm -hmm. So the, exactly. the situation is bad in Europe, especially. Mm -hmm. I think the opening up of borders have to be postponed. Right. Yes. That would be wise. I know the, the biggest hit would be on the tourism industry. Exactly. And I think that's why the urgency to open the borders. Even I legal agree. even legal profession also affected because there are some witnesses, there are some transactions, uh, right. international transactions, uh, witnesses from other countries who cannot mm -hmm. uh, attend. And uh, there are certain initiatives even in the judicial system where uh, through uh, electronic media, there are certain arrangements to examine witnesses where in urgent matters. So steps have been taken towards that, but I won't say that uh, they are operating 100% uh, today, but we are making some arrangements for that. Right. And even now, Actually, one good thing is that uh, we have got used to these legal consultations or uh, uh, programs like Google Meet. Sure, where, sure. Where, in fact, I, I have found that uh, it saves a lot of time for the client as well as for us. Because a meeting is scheduled and has a scheduled time and we can have the meeting and that's it and nobody wastes their time. <laughs> On the roads, we avoid Colombo traffic, which I absolutely love too. Yes. <laughs> yes. So therefore, uh, I think with the with the, the technology, we yeah. can uh, we new new developments have come up uh, post COVID uh, situation. <laughs> yes, we've been enlightened that uh, life without traffic is actually possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, 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 that is true. And and still, many people work from home because you can see. If, when you get to the road, the traffic is still less. It wasn't uh, same as in January or February. <laughs> this is true. You're absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. You can see still a lot of people are not on the road. <laughs> yeah. that, the traffic is my sore point personally being in Colombo. So yeah. I'm actually quite, uh, quite delighted by the whole situation. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Igalahever, excuse me, um, yes. I want to thank you for your time and your optimism and your very fair uh, comments with regards to how we made it through. Uh, congratulations needs to go to all of our leaders, yourself included, for the way that uh, our country was kept safe in a, in a very difficult and a very quite terrifying time in history. And so I think Sri Lanka has most definitely done well. So. Uh, Congratulations and my hats go off to all, everyone involved and uh, would love to have a discussion with you maybe in six months to see how things have progressed. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes. Wonderful. All right, yes. appreciate okay. your time. Thank, Thank you for you, being here. Thank you very much. Thank you.